when we talk about 5G, it could be interpreted depending on who you're talking. Most of the time, people just think of it as an icon on your iPhones. Hey, 5G network. But in reality, it is doing much more than that. If I'm not wrong, two or three years ago, the US government also released some more spectrum to further kind of democratize the 5G space. Also, earlier, you have to pay millions of dollars to get. Now, it's very, very democratized. People can, you know, very easily create their uh, 5G networks. So I want to hear from you, what is the difference there? And also, if you can also talk about, is 5G evolution of 4G, or this is more or less like, you know, uh, what we have with Wi-Fi private network, it's evolution there. So if that question makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, there's a number of different ways to approach a private cellular network. And, and I'll talk in a second about where we're going with this. But to address the spectrum allocations, that's that's been a key driver in what's enabled a lot of companies, um, ourselves included, to really come up and start delivering solutions built in that space. So in the United States, you have the CBRS spectrum, um, which, as you said, is available and um, open for a lot of different uses. Um, we are leveraging that space to provide access to our enterprises. You see also this is happening across the world. There's a lot of work in Europe being done um, in similar type things. Um, there's also work being done to take spectrum that's been given or, or purchased, owned by carriers and allowed to be used um, for private wireless um, in enterprise situations. Um, so there's a lot of things opening up. There's a really exciting movement that's happening um, it's going to enable a lot of growth in this space. Now, now to address kind of where private 5G is and how that's actually developing, you're right. It is a very, very different use case than, you know, what you see on your phone. And, and you know, maybe for a consumer, that means faster connections or faster download speed or more access to content. But when we look at that in an enterprise case, we're really looking at a lot of the other major tenants of 5G, which is, the ability to slice the network in a way to provide different priorities to different applications and tools. And that is pretty significant from a automation and manufacturing perspective, um, which is one of our key verticals. We can take this and we can assign various devices and various machines on a factory floor to have different priorities on the network so that there's assured connectivity to everything. We're also looking at from a private network perspective, because the network is, is wholly contained and owned within an enterprise, we can now really have full control over the amount of latency that's on the network, um, the amount of quality of service, the throughput, the types of devices that are connected. And now instead of an enterprise owner, you know, taking a carrier network or even taking Wi-Fi, which is you know, less strongly managed than a 5G network, they can take our 5G capability and really tailor that and orchestrate that specifically to the needs of their organization.